Hey everybody, it's Justin, your guide into the other side. Yeah, uh, today I actually dropped a poll asking Voyagers, are you changing up your Oda or Ally team compositions for season two of Legends of Noir? And I probably should have known, but the overwhelming majority of people said, no, we're waiting for Yuga to drop information on, you know, how season two is going to work, you know, what the power scaling is going to be, you know, how seasonal catalysts are going to work, how we're going to get seasonal catalysts, how we're going to, how we're going to mint our battle ally loot, how we're going to mint our sediment fragments, how we're going to use sediment fragments and battle ally loot, or I mean, uh, seasonal catalysts to evolve our Kodamaras, what Kodamaras are going to look like. Um, you know, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of stuff, guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm waiting for the information just like everybody else. It's just kind of a wait and see environment, not too big a deal. But a big real a really big question on my mind in the topic of this video is really like what's the power scaling cap of the battle allies? And I have I have, I have two answers essentially, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So um, you know, again on the wait and see environment, you know. In season one, let me just provide, provide some context. I kind of want to dip my toes into everything that the game had to offer. You know, I just want, I had my farming deed on the side here. I basically had, you know, I was just farming tier two Rainbow Atmos with my, I, I think with my farmer here. And, you know, I just wanted to see, hey, am I going to be able to farm uh, fragments at an acceptable rate in which I could, you know, evolve my Kodamaras? And at this rate, I'm just like, hey, um, maybe it'll be more efficient for me to just outright buy the you know, the fragments that get minted on, on chain on secondary marketplaces, um, instead of having to farm it myself. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what the prices look like on secondary. So again, just keep harvesting, uh, to actually go, let's actually go over sediment fragments as it stands right now, as you know, we have four more days in the season. So again, cosmic dream is actually sitting at about zero now rainbow atmos and infinite expanse are the only farmable, uh, sediment types left. So definitely farm those. And like Tanisha said, or forever hold your peace. Um, so outside of sediment fragments and farming, I definitely wanted to, you know, fight Shattered and beat some bosses so then I can get some master chests um, and get the battle out of it, right? You know, I just have my hunt, I just have my basic uh, common hunter and my epic hunter here. And, you know, I'm just kind of fighting in tier in fighting in tier two. And currently I'm kind of stuck at this uh, mosquito boss, right? Because I don't necessarily have enough DPS to beat it within the time frame. And, you know, again, just keep in mind that a lot of things were changed in season one. Like, for example, Master Chest had, you know, 20 days for the timer to get earn the Master Chest. You know, again, the standard was 10 days, but it was extended because of, you know, bugs, et cetera, et cetera. So again, it's probably going to get significantly harder to farm those Master Chests in season two, mainly because... Um, you know, it's going to go back to that 10 day timer, I, I think. And then the, you know, our, we're going to actually get implemented uh, hit points. So when, you know, this mosquito boss drops a, you know, bomb on, <laughs> or he's going to drop a, a spear bomb on us, um, you know, it's going to take out our Maras for a specific period of time on cooldown. Um, and it's going to make it harder for us to get, you know, the battle ally loot, whether that's, you know, Forgotten Runes loot, Serum City loot, you know, getting ship parts. Um, across the rarity tiers to build the ship that we want, um, whether it's applied primate crafting or Rengal loot. And then again, in season two, the loot is going to be different, right? So we don't know what necessarily those are going to be, but I kind of want to keep moving on. Um, if you can access your uh, Maras and your DPS here, right? And the big question that I had for season two is uh, the implementation of, or the integration of the the friends, right? The battle allies, right? You know, the Forgotten Runes wizards, the basically the, the whole entire gamut. We'll get to that in just a moment. But it's like the big question I had in my mind was where is the power scaling going to be with regards to how it compares to Mara's, Coda Mara's, Coda's, Megas, and Weapon uh, weapon Coda's, right? Um, so let's actually, you know, just kind of revisit what the friends are used for. Um, you know, Legends of Mar turns other side and partner NFTs into uh, in your wallet to playable teammates capable of you know fighting the shatter, right? And they add to your hunters without taking up a roster slot. So what that means to me basically is they're probably going to either do DPS or they're going to well, we'll actually read it over here in season two. So again, the shatter manifest on other side, their wrath unbounded. Uh, your fr the friends will need to mobilize a defensive as the shatter attack mercilessly, along with your Oda team. Um, 
In Season 2, the skill and cunning of Voyager strategies will shield the wounded protectors in battle and mitigate damage taken. So it seems to me like they're going to pro- the the friends will either provide a support role or maybe they'll do DPS. I'm not entirely sure. That's what the wait and see environment is for right now. Um but again, we all, we all know that the eight, the hit points are going to come back into play. Obviously that's probably going to scale based off of, you know, whether they have a mega coda or a or regular Mara. I'd assume that the the less evolved uh, Mars will have less less HP. That kind of makes sense to me. Um, and again, when your card's HP gets exhausted, you can wait for them to recover over a cooldown period or use other means to heal sooner. Ape coin, obviously, uh, regain HP and get back into the fight. Um, so again, it won't just be constant DPS like we we are having in you know right now. Um, I don't know how deep. I don't know how H- HP mechanics are going to be implemented. I guess we'll see. Maybe I'll have like a HP counter here, just like the bosses have HP counters. I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be interesting. And then also the battle, uh, the the friends, right? How many, how many are we going to have per deed? Um, I don't know where this it's going to fit in the card for like the. Uh, oh my gosh, blue, go away. <laughs> Maybe it'll be on the side. I don't know where are we gonna equip the uh, the battle allies. Oh my gosh, my UI is like super zoomed in, but that's okay. Um, basically, I, I think they'll add some UI. A- anyways, I'm just kind of going off topic here. But the main point is, where's the power scaling gonna be? And I had two answers, right? Who this is gonna? This is a speculative video, so um, take take it with a grain of salt, please. <laughs> Things are going to change and this video is probably going to get obsoleted in like five days. So um, this is just kind of my personal thoughts. So narratively, I think Codas and the Bored Apes were introduced into other side at about the same time. So I do think based off of uh, it's hard to say floor price impacts the power scaling because I know some people want it to be that way. And then I know some people are like, no, it's just battle allies. Codas should be the, the main power players and you know dps dealers to the shattered because it's you know coda versus shattered etc etc and i kind of agree i i get both sides but i think narr i think narratively i think codas and bases will have around the same impact (laughs) sorry i don't know i think that's probably where i would rank it um or either if it's not the if if board apes aren't capped at the code power levels i think probably around kodamara power levels so let's pref let's contextualize uh the dps here so there's two there's like the codas and odas will have dps power levels as well as hit points right so obviously the higher you go the more dps and the more hp that you'll have i think over so maras only have one ability Kodamaras have, I think they have two, okay? I'll have to get fact-checked after this, but Kodas, if I recall on a screenshot, I think they have two abilities in season one, and I think you can unlock a third one, but again, I'll have to, I'll have to get fact-checked, right? In For weapon Kodas, I think it's the same as regular Kodas, but you also have the weapon that you know has a certain ability, whether it can deal you know on-hit damage or has an explosion, et cetera, et cetera. And then obviously, Mega Kodas are uncontested, going to be the most powerful in the game. That's no question. Um, so again, Mars have one abilities. Codas have two. Codas, uh, Coda Mars have two. Codas have two or three. Weapon Codas, weapon Codas have two or three, and then a, a weapon. And then Mega Codas are just by all means the top tier. And take it all with a grain of salt. So battle allies, I think, will either have zero or one ability. Oh. <laughs> so. In terms of where they are power level wise, I do think they do sit at the Mara tier. Um, and I I do kind of group them all together around the same. Of course, things can change and they may have different HP or different DPS values. So I may just be blown out after you get drops like, you know, the information on us in a couple in a week or a couple weeks. I don't know. But per, in my mind right now, I just kind of treat them all the same. Um, I just, uh, I don't think anyone is picking up board apes 
to play Legends of the Mara as a battle ally. I don't think that's the purpose of having a board ape, but I do think their power scaling will be around that tier. I think Yuga will, will build it that way, but I don't know for sure. So uh, take it with a grain of salt. But I do think that the rest of the battle allies will generally stand around like Amara, Amara's DPS. So again, it is still significant, especially if you have like a team of Code Amaras and then you just have like your, your battle allies either doing DPS or, you know, I guess shielding or maybe tanking. I'm not sure. But again, all speculative in my mind. So again, do let me know if you are picking up a battle ally and where you think the battle allies will be in terms of power scaling. Again, I just kind of kept it general um, as to not like, you know, have a big <laughs> crazy fest, like trying to put them all in like different categories based off of floor price, because I think that would be kind of wild. Um, but again, let me know if you're playing Legends of Mar, if you're enjoying it. I hope I do hope that we get more information as we get closer to the end of the season, because I'm juicing to figure out what the best meta is. And again, the battle allies could all just totally be different in terms of abilities or what they do inside of the game. But again, I have no clue because I guess we'll just have to wait. So hope you like this video. Definitely hit that like and subscribe button if you found anything interesting or intriguing. Um, I would definitely reference the Yuga blog. I would definitely also use other side wiki if you want to, you know, find the abilities directly pretty easily um, and then just enjoy the ride I suppose because we have a lot we have a lot we have uh, it, we only have four days left so we'll figure it out by then but anyways I gotta sign off I'm dragging on too long I'll see you guys on the other side peace